Time to get started.
It's worth it. Usually when I plan an adventure, I like to integrate some kind of challenge that I haven't experienced before. Making the attempt doable, but with some aspect that will earn me a new merit badge, as it were. After going through a bunch of iterations of this over the last couple years and in my time in Europe, I decided to use the last 10 days of my EU visa to do a bucket list hike, the Picos de Europa in North Spain. No, this isn't in the Pyrenees, it's just, west, it's just west in central north Spain. And it's right near the coast, near Santander. If you've heard of the Picos de Europa or you're really into the hiking community, you may have seen Craig Adams' cinematic masterpiece video of his hike in the Picos de Europa. And as I was looking for hikes that I wanted to do in Europe before coming here, this one was on the top of my list. This place looks like it's out of Avatar. Now, in the Appalachians, my stomping grounds, I'm pretty comfortable hiking 10 months out of the year. There's little that the Appalachians can throw at me that will be too far out of my comfort zone. As a result, I usually don't have to do too much logistics when I'm going out to hike. I bring the food, there's plenty of water, and I just go. Naively, I thought I could do the same thing for these Picos. Boy, was I wrong. Looking at the distance and the elevation, I planned out the days that I wanted to go, five days, and then I just added an extra day for the extra elevation that I'd be going through, figuring that would be plenty. When I arrived at the trail, others were surprised to hear that I planned to hike the 77 miles in the six days. Most people hike it in eight days and stay at one of the refugios each day. There's refugios along the trail that you book in advance, sometimes a couple weeks to be able to get each day that you want. These refugios are like little mountain shelters where they have to sometimes helicopter in the food and everything that they supply there because they are so inaccessible by car and nobody's gonna hike up hundreds of pounds of food. The shelters usually have solar power and it's some rock shelter where there's bunk beds for people to sleep at night and basically just protect you from the weather. The Picos are only accessible a few months out of the year once the snow has melted. And even though I was there in late July, I got turned off the trail once because the snow was covering it and I had to go around the snow that was still there. I experienced multiple wake up calls on this trip. The hike ended up being harder than expected and I ended up not enjoying it. Not because of the difficulty, that I can embrace. 
I was humbled and stressed by the treacherousness of this route to the point where I felt it was unwise for me to continue. I hadn't planned to scramble up a mountain for kilometers at a time while no one was in the same valley. I hadn't planned to focus 100% on my feet with any misstep, meaning serious injury or death. This takes a lot of adrenaline and I found that each time I was getting to a safe spot, I was very tired, but the adrenaline would wear off and I would just be absolutely drained. I think mentally preparing for these challenges may have made it much more possible, but since I hadn't expected it to be so difficult, the expectation versus reality, the, the difference there made it, like I said, unwise to continue. Logistically, adding a few more days to the trek, making it an eight day trip, I think would have made it possible for me. But since I had a goal of going a certain distance each day, I was pushing harder than I should have been and ended up getting sunburned. My feet and legs were killing me, but more I was just so drained from the stress of the hiking each day. I was starting to make mistakes and out there you cannot make mistakes. On the fourth day, 75 kilometers in, I was so stressed by my misjudgment of the trail, I decided it would be better just to hump back to town and take the loss on this one. I'm not so stubborn or proud to put myself in danger to complete a hike. This was easily the most beautiful trail that I've hiked, matching the best views that I saw on my bike ride through the French Alps. I am thankful for the parts of it that I saw, and I got a few more badges under my belt. If I was going to attempt this hike again, I would definitely plan to do it in eight days and bring a hiker friend with me just so I'd have some, somebody else to watch me, somebody else to take the lead on some of these more difficult climbs. I'd also bring sunscreen and my trusty fishing hat that is very wide brim. So I don't look at this trip as a failure and I'm not mad at myself for quitting. It was the right thing to do and trips will be planned better in the future. I'll end with a quote from David Goggins. Living life avoiding failure does only one thing for you. It never gives you the opportunity to see what you are truly capable of. 